Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, so I decided I was going to do the assumption challenge. It seemed to be like a huge thing that a bunch of people in one of the YouTube groups that I'm in decided to do and everybody was posting their pictures and before I start mine I just want to say that crap got brutal. I mean brutal as F. I'm not even playing like Oh my god, I was so surprised by, like, not mine personally, but, like, some people got really, really mean, and I'm not trying to go all SJW with it, it's just really mean in a non-joking way, because I, th I thought it was supposed to be, like, a real fun type thing, but, like, if it seemed like if you're too pretty that you were being called a hoe and every other name like that in the book, you were getting called a pedo and stuff like that if you're, like, an ode... An, an older gentleman who was a YouTuber and uh, it just got crazy and but yeah mine not so much I mean I got a few funny ones and stuff but yeah let's go into this and address the rumors as everybody else has been saying <laughs> first off I used this photo in my assumption challenge made a post saying, you know, assume whatever you want about me. And here's the responses that I got. I'm sorry if I don't say people's names right. My bad. Amanda Cazart, you are a loud person. Of course I'm a loud person. I'm from the South. I think just about everyone from the South is loud. And yeah, plus, you know, having several kids, I have to be able to yell and project my voice over like all of theirs because I am severely outnumbered here. Andy Waugh, you look like you did some serious he head banging in your days. Uh, actually not really. Um, I, I love music. I like to say that music is my religion. It's the one thing that's never let me down. I like music from all kinds of genres, but as far as going to an actual like, like, uh, heavy metal concert or anything I've never actually done it though you know I do enjoy bands like uh, Korn or Marilyn Manson or I know those are kind of like 90s bands but you know I grew up in the 90s so but like heavy heavy metal where you can't understand what they're saying I don't really enjoy that uh, so I enjoy more of a lighter metal than a real heavy metal so, yeah, I, I like to hear the lyrics, know what they mean, and really connect with the song. April Molsky said, you like to go out. <laughs> the opposite. I'm like, I do not like to go out. I really don't. That's actually something I've been trying to fix in my life because I stay home besides, like, you know, going places I have to go. Um, I like to stay home so much. I'm about a recluse. Uh, like a, about a complete recluse if I didn't live with so many people I would be alone like all the time I, I despise going out uh, so I'm actually the complete opposite of that comment but thank you Callum Ogle I assume you speak your mind and don't take crap from anyone I do these days that is something I am dead set on because when I was, it took me years to get to that point because when I was a lot younger, I was the doormat. I was such a nice person that everyone took advantage of it. They took my niceness as weakness. And I was really afraid to speak my mind because I didn't want to make people mad at me. But as I've gotten over, older, I just kind of got tired of being the doormat, you know? And I guess by the time I was like, 24, 25, I really started speaking my mind, and now I can't shut up. So, yeah, I, I am very much like that now. I will tell you what I think, regardless of, you know, what you may think, because honestly, I don't like to lie. And that's, that's always been a big thing with me. But when I was younger, I had, like, a lot of anxiety around telling a truth that I knew the other person wasn't going to agree with. But... I think social media fixed that in me a lot because nowadays like I may know you're not going to agree with you but I'm going to tell you what I think anyways and if you don't agree with me well that's okay too. I don't want you to be a clone of me so and 
your perspective on whatever the subject is may open my eyes to something different so I'm very I'm also very open to hearing other people's opinions even if you know they differ from mine this one is from camera crew and I'm guessing that's their their YouTube page camera crew you do a lot of story times actually no and I actually get this a lot like on my social medias a lot of people think I'm more of a family vlogger and such which I consider myself a multi-content channel because I started out doing skits and vlogs and uh, posting my family videos and then moved into peculiar occurrences and kind of been concentrating on that and I'm actually doing this right now because I've gotten pretty like I'm burnt out on peculiar occurrences I'm to the point to where like I don't enjoy it like I used to and I think you guys are noticing that and I, I just want to do other stuff you know but that's actually why I chose to go ahead and sit down and do this so uh, no I don't do many story times so I do have a few I do have a few story times so if you want to you can go look into my stuff and find those old story times this is from uh, the YouTube page off the grid living and they said uh, from Christie Street off the grid living I assume you are a rockin' mom, mama, and wifey. And I'm assuming they're saying that because they're actually on my Facebook page where I do post a lot what's go going on in my day-to-day -day life. So if you ever want to know more about me, um, joining my Facebook, not the fan page, but my actual Facebook where you can friend request is a good way to do that because I'm very, very open on there. Um, so I'm assuming that that's why they're assuming that about me because I do post a lot about my kids on my Facebook but thank you I'm actually very honored that you assume that about me because I you know like every other mama out there that's a good mama or you know at least a decent mama I try I try I do the best that I know how to do so which is you know I don't want to say hard for me but my mom has been in and out of my life since I was 10 years old. Like, there's a couple of videos on here of her because um, the chances I've had to be with her, I wanted to capture it and remember it because she she's one of those kind of people that when times get tough, she gets going. And I made a promise to myself a long, long time ago that I was never going to be that way and I would always put my kids first and they were going to be my priority and top responsibility and that's what I've done I've taken examples from my dad who I was raised by my dad and he always did everything to his ability to put me first and that's what I've tried to do that's also why I say I suck at being a girl because I was raised by a man so I do kind of suck at like the makeup and stuff like that and because I never had anybody to really teach me. I had to teach myself. And I found that very hard now because I have, I have, you know, uh, girls. I have boys and girls, but I have girls. And, and they're to that age where I have to teach them makeup and I barely know how to do it. So I'm like looking at Jeffree Star and I was like, okay, well, this is how you do this and this is how you do that. I literally have learned most of my girl stuff from like... YouTube and friends and stuff like that. My Nana. My Nana was a huge influence in my life. I know I'm going totally off subject here, but I feel like those aspects of my life has really influenced who I am as a mother. So I definitely try to the best of my ability to be the best mom that I can. This one's from Courtney Corns, and Courtney Corns says, I assume that you may have been in the weird or different kind of group in the high school but you didn't mind and had a great group of friends channel name Courtney Corns um yeah you completely assumed right uh, when I was in school we had uh, like this outcast corner where people that wasn't in like any particular group kind of kind of fit and I didn't really fit in anywhere like I couldn't pull off the goth freak look or and I wasn't a prep and I was very tomboyish but not tomboyish enough because I wasn't into like sports and I was I was kind of a nerd 
but not like nerdy enough if that makes sense so I really didn't fit in much of anywhere but if I had to pick something it was like the weird and the outcast kids that I hung out with that's one of the things that inspired me to start peculiar occurrences or at least to use the name peculiar occurrences and the name peculiar squad is because it's the weird different outcast people that I've always connected the most with you know the people that other people are freaked out by those are my people you know and so yeah I totally agree with that I cannot pronounce this net last name but Elvis you'll see the thing here Elvis married with kids I guess you are completely correct I don't know how you guessed that from that picture but you are 100 percent correct very happily married very happily with kids and would not change it for the world Paul Vinson also known as hat man if you haven't seen his channel go check it out I'm a huge fan of hat man I freaking adore him and he's a really good friend of mine on like Facebook and Twitter and other social medias he's a commentator from the UK and he's pretty awesome um, yeah but hat man says I assume you're a dom behind the scenes. I'm not answering that. Kids might be watching. I'm not answering that. And that's just his personality. He's he's funny like that. That should be a, a reason why you go watch him. Um, but then my friend Daniel Hancock who I've known since like sixth grade commented under his and she said you do look kind of domish in that picture girl lol which she had made another comment saying that she had known me too long to assume that she really wanted to get in on it but she couldn't because she knows me too well to assume things about me but yeah I don't see how I look domish in that picture but okay sure um don't call me out like that not saying that i am but still oh uh, and this is my friend this is my friend heidi and she's from dead deadman production and she says i assume you were one of the outcast kids like me and i've already answered this yes i i am or i was always have been um actually as i got older i got into rpg um role playing like book and dice role playing and uh became like a huge nerd uh vtm most people probably know more dungeons and dragons but i was more into vampire the masquerade that's just me and a lot of the outcast kids where i lived played it yeah that yeah big nerd big outcast she's definitely right I must just have that look. I don't see how I have that look. I always felt I couldn't pull that look off, but I must just have the look. As on Voss, you don't shave your legs. I don't want to show my legs. <coughs> what do you think? <coughs> I shave my legs. I do. I swear. Maybe not so much in the winter, but I do shave my legs, okay? Hey, this one's from uh, Jade Rail. You like the color blue. The picture in the background is actually a blue screen. But yes, I do very much like the color blue. It is one of my favorite colors. I can't say your name, but here it is down here. It says, I assume you asked a lot of people for free cigarettes. You saying I look poor? I mean, you would be assuming right that, I, that I'm poor, but are you saying that I look poor? Well, screw you too. I've always paid my own way. Thank you very much. And this one's from Martin Robinson, who has the channel Mr. G. He is also a commentator from the UK, a very good friend of mine. He also does, like, beer reviews and gaming, which I hadn't seen him do that in a long time. He's mostly gotten into more drama videos and commentating. But, yeah, go check him out. Um, you're confident and don't take rubbish from anybody. You know my channel, which he knows I know his channel, Mr. G. And I've already went through this once. Uh, but I'll address the confidence one. I am actually not that confident in, like, real life. I'm not that confident at all. Part of me doing YouTube was to try to build up my confidence. I actually have videos um, 
where I think it's in the uh, about the real Lil's Nova video that I did a vlog I did a long time ago where I talk about how I'm not comfortable in front of the camera and I really wasn't at that time I've gotten a lot more comfortable now but I really wasn't back then it took a lot of a self building and working on myself to build up that level of confidence but yeah I've actually had very low uh, body image issues and um, self-confidence issues most of my life and it was actually marrying my husband and just the way he treats me that's really built up my self-confidence mostly and really gave me a lot of courage to come out of my shell and uh, being on camera has also done that in a whole different way for me so yeah yeah I guess I didn't but I kind of do now but at the same time, I still don't, if that makes sense. I can't say his name, but they asked if I liked the smell of my armpits. <coughs> oh, that made me really cough. <laughs> I'm just joking. It smells like deodorant. I swear. <laughs> uh, Ray R, you're a vlogger that uses green blue screen effects. I I guess so. Would peculiar occurrences be considered a vlog or like I call it a show? I don't know. I guess so. I do do vlogs too. So sure. Sarah Fisk. You seem like a really loud, fun, confident person who uses healing crystals and eats vegan. Okay, to be truthful, I am a agnostic atheist, which means I don't, I'm not a complete atheist. I do believe there's stuff out there, and that's part of what Peculiar Occurrence is about. Peculiar Occurrence, in a way, is my study into things into things that are paranormal trying to find out the truth of of what's real and what's not and such so I, I do believe there's stuff out there but I don't exactly claim to know what and vegan no I am very much a meat eater uh, I love it I love meat um, meat don't always love me but I do love meat and I'm sorry if I lose like half of my subscribers over this but I do I don't kill the animals. The animals are already dead. And they're either going to die and go into the ground and give the ground and the dirt nutrients or they're going to go into me. Because if I don't eat meat, I will literally die. Because I, I was born with a genetic disorder called, it's nicknamed the motherfucker disease. I'm not even joking. It's not like a disease. It's a genetic disorder. It's not something that can be passed off to anybody except for I may have a child that's born with it because it's something in my genes. It's actually called, uh, I can't say the name, but they use initials and it's called MTHFR. And my body doesn't process, um, my body doesn't process folic acid. I have to take methylfolate every single day. This is what... Uh, folic acid turns into my when you when you digest it, and my body doesn't doesn't uh, change folic acid into methylfolate, and it also keeps me having a severe B12 deficiency. And my vitamins in general, especially when it comes to like meat and stuff, is all messed up. Like my proteins and stuff, and it makes my body not produce dopamine which causes me to have severe depression but as long as I take like all of these vitamins like every day and I and I keep a good diet a good well balanced diet I'm pretty okay with without all that I am severely depressed severely sick and can barely get out of bed it's horrible it didn't really start affecting me until my late 20s I didn't even know about it until I had my last child and my uterus ruptured and I had him early and then they figured out all my levels were all messed up and I had to go see a bunch of doctors and have a genetics test and 
my child and myself almost died because of this disorder that I never knew that I had, which it wasn't even known to medical science until about 2001. And they didn't start checking for it in newborns until about 2004. So there's reasons why I had to live that way because they didn't know it existed. So yeah, I can't be vegan. Like, I literally cannot be vegan. It would kill me. Sparta, you dream big. I certainly try to. I mean, as far as YouTube goes, I, I guess I dream big. Otherwise, I'm just happy with my family and home and all that. And I love doing YouTube. That's, that's what it's about. I just love doing YouTube. And I love connecting with so many people and making so many friends from all around the world. And I just enjoy it, really. And I guess I do dream big with YouTube, though, but that's about the only area I really dream big. Another name I cannot pronounce. You are a woman, just assumed your gender, channel name, Memesh. How dare you assume my gender? How do you know what I have down my pants besides the fact that I have a whole handful of children? Just say it. So with that, I am out. That is the last comment. Assume my gender all you want. I don't really care. Go ahead and assume it down below or talk about any other comment in this that you would like to talk about. And with that, I am out of here. If you like this sort of content, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it because I'm trying to think of other things to do besides peculiar occurrences. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and that little bell so that you know when I upload. And I will see you folks next time. Peace. YouTube has just demonetized all of my videos. So please help support the creator by checking out my merch store. Novaland is a store where you can find t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, iPhone cases, and many designs designed by me. As well, a peculiar occurrence fan? Well, I've opened up a store just for you. So head on over and buy your peculiar occurrence gear today. Links are in the description box below. Thank you. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah.